Yeah. Okay. That should do it. All right. I think we're we're done now. Go ahead. Great. <laughs> cool. Um, you want? You just want to start us off, Keith? Ben? Yeah, I'll go ahead and start off. Um, well, it's a week from Friday, you guys, so that's uh, not too much time to to prepare. So let's make sure and get all our questions out today and tonight, and and then uh, if you think of other questions, you know, in the next couple of days, please get back with us right away, and we'll we'll figure those out for you. We want everybody to go down super prepared. Um, we're going to go through a quick little agenda here. Um, we'll do introductions. We'll talk about the model of development a little bit, a trip overview with the itinerary, and then just basically what an expedition experience is like. Most of you have kind of been on one, so you kind of know that already. So we'll kind of kind of go through this pretty quick, and then some packing and uh, some just suggestions on what to bring, what not to bring, and. Um, and then uh, uh, your paperwork. We'll have to focus on that for a little bit because there's a few that still haven't got them in yet, but um, yeah. I'm hoping to get the rest of all of your paperwork in by the end of the week. And I know Keith and I would prefer this to be as interactive as possible. So if you guys have any questions or doubts or anything, feel free to just jump right in and interrupt us and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, go ahead and hit the, hit the slide. All right. Okay, I think everybody here kind of knows that, you know, we'll, we're Choice, Choice Humanitarian, the Center for Humanitarian Outreach and Intercultural Exchange. Of course, the intercultural exchange is very important, and we'll be doing that, a lot of that, uh, on this expedition. Founded in 1982 by Dr. Uh, James Mayfield and Tim Evans. Um, some of you know Tim and Jim. Um, what's interesting is that in 30, it's 35 years ago, and both Tim and Jim are still involved in the organization in one way or another. Jim is on our board. Um, so we're really happy that our founders continue to be involved uh, with the organization. The model of self-reliance, this is a model that's, that we've exercised now for our whole life, our whole existence as an organization. And it's a bottom-up approach and, and includes um, um, a self-reliance uh, method of working with the villages. We work in the village three to five years and and try and teach them and uh, methods on how to uh, not only reduce their poverty but to to um, become self-reliant and that's our goal. Um, what's most important about our organization I think that we're different than others is that we have an incredible um, in-country field team. Um, and you guys are all going to meet Juan those of you that haven't met Juan yet are going to meet Juan and his team, and you're going to come away with the same feelings we have about uh, him and his team. They're just amazing at what they do. They're professionals, um, and they really understand village development. So we lean a lot on them. Um, just a quick intro real quick. Um, I've been involved in the organization since 2003. I came on. Uh, my brother did an expedition way, way, way back when, and got me interested in the organization and there was a time in my life where it where it worked and uh, I volunteered and came down in 03 and and then have since uh, come on full-time um, so yeah I love the organization it's been an amazing part it's it's a part of my life now and I love the people we work with I love our directors and our team and, uh, and I love the people we work with uh, Priscilla and, and and Alan, I mean, these are these are great people. And uh, anyway, um, that's me, Nacho. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been involved for the last uh, four years or so uh, as a student, and then I graduated, and have since been a kind of co-facilitator of these aquaponics projects. That picture there was taken in March, so just a month and a half ago or so. We were on a different a different project building some chicken coops and things, and um, somebody thought that I looked like a Mennonite. And I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's basically these like gringos up in the northern area that sell cheese. And so they had me put this hat on and, put, and carry some cheese around, and they had to get a picture of me. And Jordan just thought it was so funny that he was going to throw it into this PowerPoint one way or another, so I let him put it here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well that's our that's our in country team, and um, typically I don't know exactly how this will work, but normally they have like two or three different work areas that they're in, and so we won't we probably won't see everybody. We'll probably see a lot of them when we go to Irapuato and we go into the into their center, and we'll have a little tour of the center, the Choice Center. So we'll meet a few then. 
Um, Nacho, what, I guess we'll see Lalo, right? And Yeah, we'll see Lalo. And, yeah, like you said, you know, some, some parts of this team will be um, – really involved in this project and others may not be at all it kind of depends on um, you know who's available for the week and and uh, how much help we're going to need down there I, i'm not sure how many of them will be but uh, certainly these guys you know they're the experts they've been working here for a long time and they're going to be responsible for our security and for our food and and all that kind of thing they're just a really excellent team i can't can't stress it enough how like how how supportive they are and, and just how wel welcoming they will be to everyone all right and another thing is that you know it's really cool because when once you hit hit the ground, you feel so safe. And I know some people have, you know, reservations about uh, Mexico and, and what's going on down there. And, and uh, in some of the other countries, there's even more, there's an element of, of kind of danger, but you need to know, and everybody needs to feel comfortable that when we hit the ground, we're, we're secure, we're safe, and uh, we're in great hands. And, yeah. and these are our best friends and, and they'll take care of us. Absolutely. Um, you probably all know our, our country work areas. We're in five Latin American countries. You, know, you can see Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia, and then in Kenya and Nepal. Um, so yeah, seven countries. Our choice model, you can see that. I think it's best, maybe we talk a little bit more about this when, uh, when we're in country, Nacho. Yeah. I think it's a really uh, great exercise to talk about our model at some point. Uh, when we're all together, but um, take some time and, and, and look and see what our model is all about. Um, the most important part of our model, of course, is is this execute and celebrate portion. Um, and, and we'll be doing some of that. I mean, we expect to, to finish the project. Do, do you think, Nacho, or get close to it anyway? Yeah, we'll finish it. We will finish it by the end of the week, absolutely. So what a great, what a great deal to come down and actually finish a project. We don't always get in that in that cycle of the project. Sometimes we're coming in at the very beginning or the middle. Um, at this point, it looks like we're gonna come in and we're gonna finish it and we're gonna celebrate our success. And that's really important to the village and, and to the participants. Yeah. The experience, obviously on the left is, are all the things that are, that are known. Um, great food, we're gonna have awesome food, you guys. Hell yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna enjoy that. Um, accommodations are gonna be great because we're gonna be living with the families, and that's actually the best. And um, I've been in a number of expeditions where we've all been together on on the school grounds or a school floor or camping or. Um, and I've also had this experience where you actually stay in the homes of the villagers, and this is like by far the best uh, alternative. Yeah, as Juan was asking Keith and I, you know, kind of what, what our thoughts were on what we should do for accommodations, he was like, oh, there's kind of like this one big community area or we can stay in homes, like what would you guys prefer? And both of us kind of without hesitation said, you know, we would prefer to stay in, in the homes because you really get the, uh, the expedition feel and the feel for, you know, what they actually live like if you get a chance to see their living quarters and see what it's like when they wake up in the morning and it's cold or they're just on the concrete floor, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and, it, and it gives you a really good chance to kind of, uh, make connections and, and really that's what it's all about you know meeting people and getting to know them and you'd be surprised how much you get to know someone after a few days of working and and living with them and and that's really the beauty of the expedition is, is to get to know the family get to know the people and get to know the culture it's in, Mexico has, it has an amazing culture um, yeah. and so that's that's what's going to be be awesome the unknown of course are some areas where you know, we try and make the plan and we try and come up with every option, um, but we don't always get it right. So it's, it's kind of, you need to take the kind of attitude that um, something may go wrong. We may have to change our plan at one point or another. We may have some delays. We may have something going on that, that uh, kind of throws a wrench into the plan. So just be flexible. Things are going to happen. Uh, but it's all going to be great, and, and we're actually going to enjoy some of the tangents we get on um, if we have, you know, something, a wrench comes through and, and messes up our plan a little bit. It'll be fun. We'll get through it, and, and uh, it'll be a great memory. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, here, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the area that we're going to be in. This is a kind of a unique um, trip in that we get to be almost right next to Irapuato. It's a 40 minute drive from Irapuato and it's right in between 
Um, let me see. There's a, actually a better picture. It's right here. So we'll fly into Leon, Guanajuato, on the top left. Um, and that's about 40 minutes from Irapuato, where the choice headquarters is. So we'll stay in a hotel that night, on the first night, in Irapuato. And then um, on Sunday, that, that first day, we'll tour the facility there. We'll see all the projects that they've done. Everybody will get a chance to see what the aquaponics looks like. And as a functioning aquaponics project, it's been there for two years. And then in the afternoon, we'll head um, to our actual community, which is just a little bit north of Obama, there that you can see. And it's, it's um, essentially all on the highway. It's a really easy to get to. We're, we're, it's just a 40-minute drive um, to our community, which makes that day and our final day a lot easier than some of the other ones where we're three or four hours out and it's just like a half a day of travel. So that's one of the things that I really like about this. We're, as you can see, we're right in the middle of Mexico, central desert. We're nowhere near the beach. It's not, it's going to be dry. Um, plan for hot weather, like mid eighties uh, in the afternoons and just cooler evenings, lows in the mid forties to the fifties. Um, so kind of dress, Plan to dress in layers for the evenings, just a jacket, uh, but in the afternoons, it's gonna be hot. So Nacho, I have a question with this project. Do, should we bring a set of gloves or is that gonna be there? Um, you should definitely bring a set of gloves, yep. Um, and so one of the things that we'll be doing is working with chicken wire. And if you've worked with that before, it has a real tendency to, to kind of mangle up your hands a little bit. It's easy to cut yourself. So yeah, you'll want a pair of leather gloves. Um, that'll protect your hands, absolutely. Um, okay, and so our community is called Comadero Grande, uh, and here's, you can see some pictures, this is of our actual site, and so you can see Total Desert, uh, the, the guys, this is the choice team have already started, uh, this, this was taken maybe three days ago, and so they built the, the greenhouse for us, and there's a couple pictures, the ladies have been down in the trench already digging our, our pit for one of our beds for us, they're they're super jazzed and excited for us all to get down there because uh, they, they got a chance earlier this year to go see the aquaponics project in, um, in Arapuato, the one that you guys will all see on our first, our first day there. And they're just, they're, they're, they're super jazzed on it. And so they're, they're out there in the trenches working, getting ready for us. Um, and we'll get to meet all of these, all of these folks. There's 28 families that are going to be kind of a, a partaker in this project. Um, so that's some more kids just just getting getting into it, getting their hands dirty. You know, I love that the village has gone out there and, and actually gone into and seen one of these projects uh, working, and that's something that Choice does now more, actually more than than not. And I'm thinking in Bolivia, you know, we have these uh, very unique designs of uh, greenhouse schools, greenhouse classrooms, and the same thing happens. It's so cool because the, the whole village comes out to, to a greenhouse classroom and sees this technology and sees what it, what it can do to their community. And then, then they're bought into the project. And, and this yeah. seems to be the kind of the same concept here in Mexico that now we have a village that's really bought into this project. They want this project in their village. So I love that, we've already, that they've already seen one in action. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a key step. I agree. Um. Let's see. Oops. Um, yep. So here's a picture of them just kind of seeing this is where we'll be on that first day. That's the choice, the choice headquarters there. And they're just kind of checking out all the different projects that they are, that they do and are involved in. Um, just a, a, like a real quick kind of project timeline is um, the first couple of days we'll be working on staking out bed locations, digging, digging graft that has already been done by them. That's kind of what you can see. Um, We'll be attaching and cutting chicken wire. And so what we'll do, we'll divide into teams, uh, probably three or four teams, and we'll have different projects that each each group will work on um, each day. And we can go a lot more into depth, obviously, when we get there. But we'll have like one team working on attaching the chicken wire and kind of preparing um, one setup. And while we'll have another team pounding posts and another team working on preparing the tanks. And so we'll divide up and just make sure that everybody is being used efficiently um, for the hours that we have. Uh, program to work and then we'll have we'll have lots of time also scheduled to just kind of do like intercultural exchanges uh, and I'm not exactly sure what the Mexico team will have prepared for us uh, but it could be things like making pinatas or um, you know kind of following the, following them in a day in a day in the life where we'll go and make tortillas or salsa or um, play soccer like there'll be different programs uh, during different times of the day that, that we'll be partaking in. 
um, building raft beds. So they have, there's a whole a whole layout of of the different things, and yeah, we'll talk about that more later. If you have specific questions, um, you can direct those to me. Here's some pictures of a trip two years ago. You can see Tom Fox right there, right front and center, on that top picture. Um, nice. Just, you know, and, hey, you not know, sure. One of the things that's different about this is we won't we won't be doing quite as much uh, cinder block work as we did on the last one. So that'll be nice. Do you have a question? Yeah, this is Mark. Is that is that Nacho? Yeah. Hey, it's Mark. Tom's really worried that he's not going to have like his double bed express deluxe <laughs> like he did the last time. Is that possible that you could fly one in for him, or should we just plan on helicoptering <laughs> that in? See, see, I'm not sure that if if it's Tom or if it's you that's worried about it. I I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> not me. I'll tell you that. So. Oh, okay, okay. Keep going. I apologize. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um. The, the living, I, I think you might have come on just a few minutes after we uh, kind of talked about the living quarters. We'll be in, we'll be in the houses for this one, so you don't need to bring a tent, uh, but definitely bring a sleeping bag, and you're welcome to bring an air mattress or sleeping pad. But we'll be in houses, not in most likely not in beds, uh, but they will have cots for everybody, kind of like we did back in Agua Blanca. Perfect. So, That's great. Thanks, man. Yeah, I plan on that for sure. And just a couple more pictures. And, and like I said, we'll be doing this one a little bit differently, not building it with the cinder blocks, but instead we'll be pounding posts and then attaching a chicken wire and a hardware cloth um, kind of conglomeration together to build our to build our big bed. So you guys will get to kind of see how we're doing it these days. Oh, I'll let um, Keith, there's, so what yeah. saving box is, is kind of a choice, choice uh, universal thing. I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. This is this is really cool, and I hope I hope we have time to kind of see one in action. But the the Women's Savings Box program really is the foundation for uh, choice work in Mexico. This is kind of how the, the choice model is um, initiated in every village, um, where the the women get together, they form a group, and they start uh, every week. They have a meeting, and they bring in um, X amount of pesos. They have a treasurer, a secretary, a president, and everything, and they they collect all their uh, some of their resources and they put them in the in the lockbox there um, and then they talk about the community they talk about what what they're saving up for a lot of them are saving up for um, school fees or something else or maybe it's a community project where everybody's going to put together X amount of dollars and and really start a start a community project but this is one way of, of really involving um, the community, especially the women, um, and this, I think, Priscilla and uh, and uh, Josie, you guys are going to really love seeing this, um, and, uh, and I hope you get a, become a part of it. And and it's cool because we could go to their meeting, we could go to their meeting and kind of um, just sit with them and and hear their discussion. I think it would be really cool. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Uh, hey, we're in. Yeah, it's we just great. Oh, great. Yeah, I think one of the things that, that really kind of well, oftentimes strikes um, expedition participants by surprise is that it's the women that essentially control um, the savings box and the projects. And that's because they're the more reliable um, in that the, the men are often um, migrant <laughs> workers or, you know, you, barachas, you never know. Sometimes they're the, they're the more responsible, the more invested in their children's futures. And so they're... Yeah, hey, Nacho, we're more responsible. Say it loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, there are exceptions. There are exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> and so they essentially, you know, they're the ones that choose the projects and they're the ones that choose what they want to invest their, um, their little but hard-earned money in. And so... I really think that it's a unique but a cool a cool way of um, kind of directing a community. And, and just real quick, you know, there there's going to be some other activities too that we'll be involved in. And we were talking to Lauda today, and uh, we won't all have to be you know doing really hard manual labor. I'm I'm sure we're going to get that done one way or the other. But um, you know, there'll be some other site kind of projects that we can work on, some painting and some ovens and and stoves. I think they're constructing so. There'll be, a, there'll be a number of different activities that uh, we can be involved in. All yeah. right. Yep. I'm kind of just talking through village life and, you know, kind of back, back to that slide that was what to expect and what, and, and the unexpected, the things that could come up, you know, well, the last project we were just, we did in the teams, we were doing dishes in the wheelbarrows 
eating situations may or may not be at tables, um, but you can expect good food. That's the one constant I would say. <laughs> um, almost always fruits. And um, now they're doing warm breakfast. So I don't know if uh, Mark and Tom remember our last trip, but it was kind of cold cereal for breakfast. They're on this, this warm breakfast thing now. So it's something to you know, wake up and look forward to. Yeah, I'm super excited to, to see how they do their breakfast because I've been on the, on the cold cereal one and and uh, I'm, I'm really anxious to see how they do their hot breakfast. <laughs> yeah, you'll get to meet. They've got a, a chef now that they hired. His name's Edson. He's a really nice guy. He'll be there the whole week for us, I'm sure. Wow. Some, some we, have a Nacho, we have a chef this time? <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, uh, we're, this, we're not roughing it. This is like, wow, that's impressive. Hey, man. Nothing but the best. Ed's, he's a cool guy. I'm, I'm excited for you guys to get to meet him. He's super nice. Um, just kind of some pictures of, uh, you know, people doing, doing different projects. And like we said, there'll be other projects for us to be there, whether it's water cisterns or stoves or, um, or ovens. Uh, we're not sure yet, but, you know, that'll be kind of up for the community savings box to decide and for Juan and those guys. Um, but they'll, they'll be there and available. A couple other pictures. Um, yeah, just a, a really quick dynamic here. You know, I, the success, I think the people that get the most out of these expeditions are those that can find the balance between um, being well prepared, but also um, keeping a sense of, of humor and flexibility about, you know, what each day entails. And we'll go through the, the night before what our plan is for the next day. Um, but you just got to bear in mind that plan could easily change. You never know what, um, what weather, what, um, what curveballs Mexico is going to throw at us. So I just would encourage everybody to stay, um, to just stay open and flexible with, um, with where the plans for the project go. Um, Keith, do you want to just kind of go over the, the key rules? Yeah, this is important and we have to bring this up on every, uh, on every expedition, no gifting, no proselyte proselytizing and no no promises and there's a reason for that and and uh, we don't want to set false expectations and, and giving gifts is really not not even part of the choice model and and uh, that's just something not even uh, remotely uh, something that we're going to get involved in so no gifts no proselytizing we have to say that we have a lot of you know uh, in this valley we have a lot of predominant religion going down there and trying to, you know, uh, convert other people. And, um, that's, that's not acceptable either. We're not, we're not, we're totally unaffiliated with any religion. And, and so we don't want to proselytize, um, you no know, promises. A lot of people go down there and they see folks that really are really in need and they're like, they want to do something and they're, they're so moved and, and I get it, you know, they're inspired and they're moved and they're like, man, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this and I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to give it to you or do this. Um, just no promises, please. Because yeah. a lot of times those things just never materialize and your life changes. And um, So don't make any promises. Um, try not to do that. Um, yeah. yeah. Just try to come together as, as you know, humans helping humans. And right. The, you know, the one caveat to the no gifts is that if, if people want to bring – kind of community gift sort of things, where, whether it's sports equipment or if they have things left over after the trip that they want to bring home, um, rain boots or air mattresses or whatever they brought that's extra that they don't want to bring home, it can be left with Juan and the team down there and they can appropriately divide that up or, um, you know, leave it where it's needed most kind of a thing. Or, or if it's, you know, in the case of sports equipment, it can be left with the whole community with the school, something like that. So there are exceptions to that. Um, but yeah, we're not we're not we're not in the business of, of just bringing down things to, to, to hand out. Um, next thing up is the packing list, and now you guys you guys all have this in your in your little packets in the email that, that Jordan sent out. Um, you know, a few things that I would just touch on are uh, we'll we'll have like small small little packets of sunscreen for everybody, but make sure you bring sunscreen. Um, Rain poncho may uh, will probably be critical in this area. I think there's a there's a decent chance of rain in the afternoon and uh, gloves like um, like was mentioned earlier. Everybody should bring their own leather gloves where we're working with this chicken wire and there's a, a, a decent chance people can cut themselves. Um, anything else you want to highlight on here specifically or anything that people have questions about? On Something the that, I, that I almost always forget that I, I'm not going to forget this time because 
a travel pillow. For some reason, bring a travel pillow. They, uh, the times that I've gone down there without a pillow, I'm just, you know, can't sleep, can't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Earplugs. I don't know if earplugs hey, are on the uh, list, but. Uh, I'm not sure, Keith. Yeah. I, I apologize. I'm joining. I joined late. But um, did you guys cover what's uh, what what's like the? I know it can rain and all that. But is are we talking 80s, 90s temps and what uh what what are what were you thinking there for for packing? I just want to make sure my son's prepared. Okay. Yeah, we're talking probably up to 90 um, in the, in the afternoons. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty hot, and then in the in the evenings and at night, I'll get get down into the 40s. So really hot. Oh wow. Day. It's a desert, um, but in the upper 40s during the evening. So definitely want a jacket and um, you know a warm sleeping sleeping bag. Okay, thank you. Pretty good range, yeah. anybody Anybody else have some questions on what to bring? I'm looking at my checklist now. I think you have it covered pretty well. Uh, the leather gloves for me was one, but that you have on the checklist, good work gloves. And the travel pillow was a nice uh, uh, recommendation. Yeah, yeah I, th like I said, I think earplugs also, you know, a, a lot of times in Mexico, the, at night, all night long, dogs may be barking. And if we're in a community sleeping area, with, um, you know, if you're with five or 10 other expeditioners, there's a tendency for people to either, whether it's snoring, whether it's getting up to go to the bathroom, it's, you know, sleep earplugs, I would bring them. <laughs> I don't snore, but Priscilla does. <laughs> I, I've got a question for Nacho. I don't, I don't know that we talked about this with Juan, but will there be power? There will be power. There will, or there, it's it's kind of it'll depend on your carrier whether you'll have. I wouldn't count on Wi-Fi, and it'll depend on the carrier whether you'll have cell phone service or not. So I wouldn't count on it. There's a chance you'll have it. Um, there will be power. Okay. All right. Yeah. Other other questions. These are all these the expedition, the Mexico checklist, the expedition manual, um, and the appendix were all attached in that first email. I, would, I think it would, it's a good idea for everybody to go back and kind of review that. And and with that, make sure that we uh, that everybody's got their applications in um, by tomorrow night. That's, that's the deadline. So, yeah, I'm looking at the checklist, uh, Nacho. You uh, do not have your application in yet. <laughs> Oh man! See, oh, well, tomorrow night's the deadline. So he's on my list. On my yeah, he's on your black. You're on his blacklist. <laughs> we may not be seeing Nacho for a while. Chris is like, come on, man. <laughs> no, really, it's really important that everybody kind of you know do that. This is the week that we got to get everything in, and it's really it's really critical that the Mexico team knows knows who everybody's going to be there and when, and and the flight arrivals and departures are all correct. So. Please, if you haven't done that, and I think everybody on here pretty much has. I know Josie has, Priscilla has. I have, uh, Alan, I think you have everything in too, right? I have just the medical form and I'll have that in on Friday. Oh, perfect. Okay. So we're yeah, in good Alan. shape. Actually, Alan, I need his, uh, Alan, I'm sorry, I do need your flight info again. Oh, your flight info. I, I said it. I sent it earlier today. Yeah, but I need uh, that only had you going as far as Dallas. I need you in and out of Mexico. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna walk down okay. <laughs> <laughs> from Dallas. That's a long walk. That's a long walk. <laughs> okay, I sorry. I I didn't look at what I said. I just thought I copied everything. I'll I'll get it to you. Sorry. Thanks. Cool. Can you guys can you guys see that I that I correctly share this? Can you see the um, itinerary on here? Yeah. Is that being shared? Okay. Yeah, real quick. I just want to um, kind of maybe just talk through this. So everybody's arriving on Saturday the 6th, and then we'll spend that night in a hotel in Irapuato. And then the next morning, like I said, we'll get up, we'll we're tour the choice facility in Irapuato, and then we'll head out from there. We'll grab lunch on the way to the community, and then we'll arrive in the community on Sunday afternoon. And then um, Sunday through Thursday, we'll all be working in the community on the project, on those other projects, community activities like that. 
And then on this, it's not reflected on this yet, uh, but then we're, we are planning on leaving the community on Thursday, probably early afternoon after lunch. Um, that may be subject to change, but that's what we're planning on to head to Guanajuato, where um, we'll spend Thursday afternoon, all of Friday, and then Saturday before people take off. Or I know some people have opted to stay an extra day into Sunday to give them all of Saturday. So people will have two to two and a half days, kind of depending on when flights are, um, to check out Guanajuato. And and I'll, I'll say Guanajuato is my absolute favorite place to go after an expedition. There, there's several places we do, and um, this is my favorite of them. I'll, I'll probably propose to my wife someday in Guanajuato. So I think it's just the coolest, most pretty, uh, pretty village. Hey, I agree with Nacho. Guanajuato is an incredible place. And I'm so glad we're going to be ending up there too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Are there other, um, you know, questions on itinerary, packing, really anything? You know, we're here. Um, as a resource. I don't have any. You've got everything listed pretty well on this informational package for me. Priscilla, do you have anything? No, I don't. Thank you. Now be, be sure and read your appendix, uh, the Mexico appendix and the expedition manual, at least go through it. There are some points in there that we haven't had a chance to cover that are important. So read your materials, please. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're looking forward. It's a week from Friday. So uh, if you have any questions between now and then, get with us via email and we'll get you, uh, get you the answers. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Great meeting, guys. Thank you. Wow. Right. Looking forward All right. to it. See you guys. Take care. Have a big job. Thanks. Okay. Adios. Mañana. <laughs>